what's going on. This is what's going on. I feel like this is my biggest failure of accepting this mission. Uh, my name is Joel Petrikas. I am a writer and director of independent films here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I guess I am here to talk tonight a little bit about anxiety and maybe uh, irony as well. Um, because making movies is the thing that I love the most, uh, the thing that keeps me going, the thing that I feel I do best. But unfortunately, my biggest fear in life, the thing that I dread the most and hate, is making movies. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, made, I started making uh, little short films in high school with my friends, and we didn't take it very seriously. We didn't have scripts. I loved movies. I didn't know how to make movies. We were just kind of winging it. And, uh, and after a while, I, the hobby kind of uh, took on a life of its own and, and realized that I kind of, uh, I really liked it and maybe wanted to keep doing it. Um, so I decided to go to film school. And uh, I knew this may have been a problem because that was like a big step. This meant that I was not going to be an accountant. I was not going to be a doctor. Never was going to be a doctor. But um, this is what I was choosing to do with my life, even though I was a little bit freaked out. Um, being on a, uh, Making movies involves a lot of people, a lot of money, responsibility, big expensive equipment just surrounded by people. And uh, you know, as a kid, I was the one before every sin single Little League game, six or seven years, my parents would have to talk me down, go through breathing exercises, tell me it's going to be OK, you're going to be fine. Uh, I was the kid who would throw up before the pr Christmas program, throw up on the first day of school. I'm, I was that kid. But when I get on the, when I get on the field in Little League, I'd be okay. I'd feel fine. It was the anticipation, the, just the waiting around. It just like made me sick to my stomach. And I was going into a profession that was really like an event profession. Every day was like a thing. You couldn't just clock your hours by yourself. You were surrounded by people looking at you, expecting answers. And unfortunately, very early on in film school, a, a professor said, if you don't love being on a movie set, if that's not what you wake up every morning wanting to do and desiring that, then you will fail as a director. And everyone around me was like really in agreement with that and they were like, yeah, and you know, their thing was a bad day on a movie set was better than a, a good day at home. And I was so jealous of that because for me, a bad day at home was better than a good day at a movie set. I mean, at home you can watch movies, you can eat pizza, you can play video games. No one's asking you anything. You can just be by yourself. And that was like, it, it stuck with me for a long time and kind of messed me up um, more than it should have. So for the next 10 years, I, I still made little films with my, with my friends. I met some new friends in college, and we, we worked on some stuff, people that I trusted, people that trusted me. And uh, we just kind of did it our own way. There wasn't a lot of money. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't a lot of risk. Um, and then I, then I met my, my future collaborator, uh, Mr. Josh Burge, who was a musician in town, and I decided to put him in a short film. And we made a, uh, we made a film called Coyote, the same way we kind of you know, made movies in high school. There's only three or four of us. Sometimes it was just me and Josh, and we were just by ourselves. There was no money. There was no people you know, expecting us to do great things. There were no contracts. It was like the way I, the way I preferred to work. So I was of age, but I said, OK, dude, we should Let's make a feature film. It's that time. No more short films. So um, we did it the same way. We, you know, I, I wrote a script and we just took our time and we made a film. I wrote a film called Ape, and we shot it over the course of the summer. There was no people, you know, expecting anything out of us. They didn't even know what we were doing. And we took our time. And if I didn't feel like shooting that day, we wouldn't shoot. We just did it on the weekends for a few hours a day. And three or four months later, we had a film. And um, much to our surprise, it turned into a, a big success, premiered to a, a thousand people in Switzerland and won a, a lot of awards and, and toured, the, toured the world for a, a year and got, you know, in the New York Times critic picks and changed our careers, changed our lives, um, which is a good thing. That's all anybody, any artist wants. Unfortunately, that meant now that people had expectations. People wanted to see what was next, uh, which is fine. I had other ideas. I was ready to go. 
but I knew that meant uh, that things might have to get a little bit real. So I'd written a movie called Buzzard, and this is when things got ugly. <laughs> so I recruited a few more people that I trusted, people that trusted me. My girlfriend now came on as a producer because she was the organized one. I had a friend come from Texas to be the cinematographer. And I had friends from Seattle, from Detroit. People, people really wanted to be a part of what we were doing. So unfortunately, this meant that those people who were taking time away from their families and jobs had obligations. So we couldn't just shoot for three or four hours every other Saturday over the course of three or four months. This meant that my girlfriend producer had to put together an actual schedule, 30 days, which sounded great to me. That meant in 30 days we'd have a finished, an almost finished product. We'd have everything ready to be edited. We wouldn't have to wait around for three or four months. I thought I could do it. The first night came before the shoot. You know, I didn't get any sleep. That's the norm. You're excited. You have nerves. You're anticipating the big shoot. That's how it is. When the alarm went off in the morning, I hadn't slept. And there was, there was cold sweat literally dripping off the bridge of my nose. I was shaking. I'd never been like this before. Uh, I couldn't eat. I couldn't get out of bed. I think I may have been crying. Didn't want to do it. I was terrified. Just wanted to escape. If there was a, if it happened to be a train passing, I would have hopped on that train and just caught a ride to California. But I, uh, I had to go through with it. And I, I, I physically had to be pulled out of bed. I couldn't eat. I could barely stand up. I didn't take a shower. Didn't have breakfast. But I showed up on set, and much like the Little League days, I was able to breathe, able to relax. This is good. I felt like I got the jitters out of my system, and that the rest of the shoot was going to be totally easy and cool, calm, and collected. No. The next morning, the same thing. Cold sweat, shaking. I threw up maybe once or twice. The next day, the same thing. The next day, the same thing. By the end of those 30 days, I had lost 10 pounds. I had barely eaten, and if you look at me, I'm not a guy who can afford to lose 10 pounds, so that was not a good thing. But we did it. We did it in 30 days. Every single day, I put on the brave face, but inside, I was sick and nauseous and just wanted it to be over with. After those 30 days, I was finally able to catch my breath, relax a little bit, and I specifically remember one point in the, we were in the kitchen, me and my girlfriend making dinner or something. I, I turned to her, and I said, this is so stupid for me to ask and just tell me if I'm, I'm, I, I'm making a horrible decision. But you know I have that other idea I've been working on and I just need to ask you something. Just tell me yes or no. Am I going to be able to do, my, do this again? Am I able to, going to be able to put myself through this misery one more time? And I did it. I don't know how. Thanks, guys. <laughs>